Welcome friends far and wide across the expanse of the earth. My name's Miss Click and this is another review. Woohoo! Someone actually brought up the idea that these should be called mistakes. Kind of a play off of mistakes with mistakes. Huh? Huh? No? Okay, well it wasn't my idea, so don't get mad at me. First off, just wanted to say a huge thank you to all my patrons. Thank you so much for all the love and support that you have given me throughout all this time. Thank you to all the new patrons who have actually decided to join in since the last time we've been here. You guys are beautiful. I love you so much. Thank you for being you. And if you are interested in becoming a patron yourself, you can find the link in the description below and join us there. Thank you so much, guys. I love you. Mwah. Today, we're gonna be talking about a, a video game that I feel like has caused quite a stir over uh, the course of its launch. Uh, it's been out for a while now. Uh, you might have heard of it. Uh, the Last of Us Part Two. I'm gonna go ahead and preface this. I don't know if I'm gonna talk about spoilers. Kind of gonna feel it out as I go. I'm also gonna preface this with saying that I did not grow up with The Last of Us. I have not had years in between waiting for The Last of Us Part Two to come out. So my stance is a little bit more objective, a little bit less emotionally invested into these characters and a little bit less nostalgia driven. Let's be honest. When you've played a game and you've waited a very long time for the next one to come out, you tend to form theories and kind of thoughts in your head on how you feel like the next game is going to go. And I feel like that can kind of hinder how we experience the actual game that comes out to follow because it might not live up to our expectations. So I'm going to say all of my opinions are as unbiased as they can be. I'm going to give my pros, I'm going to give my cons, and we'll leave it at that. Feel free to let us know in the comments below what you think about this game, but please, please, please keep it civil. Feel free to give this video a thumbs up if you do enjoy it at the end, uh, and thumbs down if you don't. Let's, uh, let's get right into it. So the pros of this game, I want to go into kind of the same subjects that I did with my previous video, Ghost of Tsushima, which you can find up here. Uh, uh, uh. Anyways, we're going to start off kind of talking about my pros, then we'll get into the cons. First pro I want to talk about is the actual gameplay. This game makes the mundane still feel mundane, but it's in a video game, so somehow it's cool. Something about that extra two seconds of animation brings so much more character to the world. How? I don't know. Do I like squatting and getting things out of pantries? No, no, I don't, but in video games, you sure as heck sure that I'll do it. Sure heck. Sure. Because of that, it makes the game feel detailed. It brings characteristic to the world. Everything is emphasized. That is normal. There are some new elements introduced um, as well as classic Last of Us animations. I'll get into the cons later when it comes down to the details of this game. But for now, I will say I do like, at least in the initial phases of this game, how detailed it, fe how detailed it feels and also how involved you really feel as the character. Next pro I wanna go into is the overworld. I do like how this game opened up into downtown Seattle, for example, and you get to go into all these different areas. It's kind of less linear feeling for a short time. You have all these little side things that you can check out that aren't necessarily required. I did enjoy that. Do I feel like um, I was super motivated to do it? No, but I did like the addition of it. And I did think it was cool walking through this giant downtown that just feels so completely barren. And it's kind of depressing. I mean, the whole game's depressing. Let's be honest, it's a, it's a zombie apocalypse game. It's gonna be depressing. Everything is always depressing. I think the game obviously looks fantastic. There's a lot to it. There are a lot of different areas that you travel to, whether it's the downtown or the city of Jackson itself. You're in the aquarium and you're seeing all this, you know, all this uh, previous, kind of taken for granted theme park-esque ideas and experiences in the post-apocalyptic world. At one point, you know, you're on an island and there's like this war going on. At another point, you're at a high rise going across scaffolding and it's giving like a pit in your stomach. A lot of varied areas. And I do enjoy how they brought you and kind of pieced this world together. That was pretty much just a, a, a I guess, a, an, an ending point in the first game. I do like how it is brought to life um, you know, kind of back at the hospital that everything began at. The story, going along with the lines of Naughty Dog being more realistic and focusing on the mundane in life, this story is, the story is not 
picturesque or idealistic and many people are not gonna like that that's gonna be a con for many people for me personally as someone who is a zombie apocalypse watcher slash reader you kind of know that everybody's just gonna die and it sucks because you still get attached even though you tell yourself you won't so when they do die you're like no oh my god this is so sad and that's just how it is and then you get mad at yourself for getting attached and then the whole cycle begins again the story is emotional it does tug at your heartstrings and it lends a lot of time to the characters that you're used to and the new characters that you're not used to and it develops over time to help you kind of understand where each of these characters are coming from and what has happened beforehand what is happening now and then what happens in the future and then back to the past and then to the present past there's a lot of development that goes on over several periods of time um, pacing is one thing and we'll kind of get back into that. That's not necessarily a pro in my opinion, but I do like how we do get a chance to see the backstory of the characters and why they are doing the things that they are doing. The ending, I do like how it leaves questions and kind of a setup for a third if that is to happen and also the development of certain characters, how you see a character so despicable such as Abby kind of be um, put in a position where we can empathize more with her. We do have a shocking moment towards the end with her where you're like, whoa, that's her. What happened? And for me, I did feel a sense of these characters are one in the same. Spoiler alert, <laughs> but at a certain point you do realize Abby and Ellie are one in the same. And as much as we want to hate one more than the other, they're both just as despicable. They've both done horrendous things to not only survive themselves, but to try to avenge or save people that they love. And that doesn't always work. I do like how the fact though, that with this third possible game coming out that we could see how Abby has then gone from the path of revenge now to the path of being a new mentor, a new Joel to her Ellie, a essentially parental figure to Lev. I'm kind of excited to see where it goes from here. The last pro I'm going to talk about is the combat. Now I probably have more cons than pros in my personal opinion with the combat but i will talk about what i loved that they added in i do love the different guns that you could use between the different characters i do love how you could craft ammo i do love how the guns felt varied between the different characters i also love the fact that they the melee uh fighting felt much more streamlined i love the simple addition of the dodge button because of the fact that there were many times in the first game where you wanted to dodge so bad, but you just couldn't and you would just die so many times. So the fact that you could dodge things and then punch or use your stabby thing, like that was really cool. And I was glad that they added that in because I think they realized many people felt the defense combat was clunky. The other thing I liked is so, it's such a vanity thing, but I loved the fact that this game in the tool shed or whatever you want to call it, the crafting bench, all the all the firearms, you know, they were so detailed. When you go to change out a certain thing, you know, they're taking the gun apart and they're adding new pieces, they're polishing it, they're putting, it's just so cool. Good job on that. I'm a big fan. Moving on to the cons. Oh boy, here we go. So cons with this game. Yes, the gameplay is great. It's very detailed. It feels very much like real life, but again, it is very detailed and it does feel very much like real life. It's almost too realistic sometimes. Like sometimes, you know, you just want to kind of like run through a building and, and loot and grab your stuff and then go, or you want to fight and loot and grab. And it just, it, there, there's, you can't really have a sense of momentum in this game. It's very hard to get things done properly unless you're going to backtrack and loot after the battle are done. I would say after 10 plus hours, the whole process of having to look at the cupboard, squat down, observe cupboard, you know, pick items up slowly, that starts to get a little old. And I get that that's a lot of what this game is about. It feels like because of the fact that you were looting and checking all the little nooks and crannies, this game has felt very padded, specifically because this game is much longer than its predecessor. Overworld, for as many different places as you visit, it is pretty barren. Obviously, the loot is the main thing you are going to be looking for. And again, due to the lore, I understand why it is barren. It just feels like for as big as it is, having the same mechanics, again, with as long as this game is, just felt very mundane after a while. And I did find myself getting a little impatient. And by a little, I mean a lot. 
which mainly consisted of me like wanting to avoid certain fights in general just to move on to the next area because I was just tired. I was just tired, man. I don't like saying that, you know, the padding is a bad thing, but it just at a certain point, it feels like it's too much, you know, and you enjoyed it and you found it therapeutic. That's fine. But for, as someone who streams for long periods of time, I was just like done. The story again, because it's not ideal, it sucks. It's not a happy-go-lucky story. It is a very, it's a, it's a tragedy, essentially. How far will you go for revenge? How far will you go before you realize that you've lost everyone and everything, including yourself, including parts of yourself? <laughs> Rip. I think with the story, I did like how you rotated between Ellie's character, you rotated between Abby's character, you got to go back and forth at the beginning, and I feel like with the story, it reached a certain point where it was just a giant portion with Ellie, and then all of a sudden, when you think the game is coming to a climax at the end, you're only halfway through, and you have a whole other part to go as Abby. In my opinion, I don't know how they could have handled it maybe rotate a bit more in between i felt like when you made the switch halfway through the game and it goes to abby <laughs> you're not really caring about anything that's going on you're like oh my god what what just happened and you're trying to run through your head everything that you just saw and it kind of feels like it overshadows her character because they have literally just drilled it into you that she is the worst person ever even though i really like abby's side story i do feel like they drug it out i feel like there were a lot of scenes that could have been condensed or cut out i feel like there were a lot of lines that could have been put into the same scene as another i understand they're really trying to sell these characters to you the relationship that these characters have with each other and why you should care about who you killed in the first part of the playthrough really matters because they were a cool person in the second part of the playthrough and quite frankly I just sometimes just didn't care I was just like dude these conversations aren't that important again I just feel like because of the pacing and I was so anxious to get to the end I was just like yeah yeah, yeah you're dead anyway you know move on we're all gonna die in the end anyway people probably wouldn't like this but I think it could even could have worked as cool DLC like you you like beat the game to a certain point and then you know after the fact we find out Abby's character I don't know how it would have necessarily worked I think it'd be a really cool idea to kind of like get to know her character but you know alas it's very hard to think like that because this is how it's been now but whatever I think if they cut out a lot of the padding and made things more clear and concise to the point of the story I think it would have felt a little bit more intentional as I feel like they were really aiming for. Last con I kind of want to talk about is obviously the combat. Thing I've come to realize about the combat in The Last of Us, whether it's the part one or part two, is that the shooting is not the strong point of the game, even though there is so much of it within the game. Vanilla sticks with no aim assist is a very primitive way to play. This game is very difficult to master the art of all the different firearms and weapons when it is so jarring and not accurate to use. As someone who is very spoiled to very well and responsive gyro controls, oh my god, if they had added gyro controls to this game, it'd probably be an absolute blast. And I will say after playing a game like Ghost of Tsushima, which was an absolute, like the bow and arrow felt so satisfying to use in that game, it makes me curious as to why it felt so clunky in The Last of Us. So again, I think that's just a development trend and it's not my favorite. I do feel like with the guns again, like all the ammo was scarce. A lot of times I found myself not wanting to upgrade the guns all the way because there was just no point because there wasn't enough ammo to justify using it. Like I love the shotgun, but I could never find shotgun bullets. So what's the point of upgrading it? Like I get two bullets per freaking six hours and, and then I just can't use it and it just sucks. I get it, it's post-apocalyptic, but God dang, just give me a little bit more something to work with so I want to upgrade things. And then again, just with as long as this game was, I feel like the combat just felt a little stale after a while. Crafting bullets got cool at the end because if you'd run out of things, it would force you to use those guns that you could craft ammo for. And I, I liked that. I think the addition of the crossbow was really cool. And I, I liked the kit that Abby, you know, could acquire that was different than Ellie's. But after a while, when you're forced into fight after fight after fight or stealth after stealth after stealth, it just got old. Well, there are only so many times I want to sit through a stealth kill animation or so many times I want to sit through me, I don't know, like trying to snipe off things with a bow and arrow. 
Overall, I do like this game and the story it told. Though it is not ideal, what in life really is? If there is ever a game that is going to basically let you know that life isn't always peaches and cream and pancakes and syrup and kittens and cuddles, it's definitely gonna be this game. Do I think it could have been accomplished in different or more effective ways? Yeah, definitely. But overall, it does sell you the fact that revenge bad. Revenge very bad. Yeah, just don't, don't go for revenge, y'all. Just forgive and turn the cheek. I think that's how it goes, right? I'm curious to see where they go with the story from here. I know they're working on content outside of just the games, which will be interesting in itself. I think the game didn't deserve all the hate it got. I do understand proper critique with people who play these games. I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say this, that um, if you haven't played a game, you can't really critique it. Play the game first, and then you can give me an educated dissertation on why you don't like the game. You really need to give games tries before you leave negative reviews, and I know it's gonna leave a lot of bad tastes in people's mouth that I said that, but sweetheart, sometimes you gotta taste some nastiness in order to face the truth, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, it's very hard for me to kind of summarize everything I felt about this game. I know it's a little bit probably longer of a video, but I appreciate you hanging out and sitting around as I talked about it. Let me know in the comments below what you might have agreed with, what you didn't agree with, and let's get this, this the, blah, blah, blah. let's get the discussion going down below. And I appreciate you guys hanging out and again, supporting me and supporting this channel. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down and uh, stay awesome, stay beautiful and stay savage. Ta-ta for now. I'll see you in the next one when we talk about another game yet again. Bye.